Hi everyone. In this video, I thought I would show you my tool cart, which I built maybe five months ago in an effort to reorganize my workshop. And it's worked really well for me in that time, so I figure a lot of you may be able to benefit from a similar project. Now, I myself built this tool cart with the inspiration from Adam Savage, who you may know from the show Mythbusters, and now the YouTube channel Tested. In a video posted about two years ago to Tested, Adam showed off his rolling tool cart, which he built with the goal of getting a lot of his commonly used tools in a mobile platform that could wheel around with him to the various projects he would do in different areas of the shop and have all of his tools easily accessible in this sort of what he calls stadium seating uh, sort of arrangement where all the tools are visible. They're not in drawers where you forget that you even have them. Uh, they're all out on display, and whenever you need any of these particular tools, you just look down and there they are. You're not forgetting about all the specialized tools that you have hidden away in a drawer. So that was part of my purpose for this project, but I had an additional purpose, which was to make this platform a useful device for producing my videos. And so part of the purpose was to have a uh, tabletop surface, a little miniature workbench that I could use for filming my projects. I built this at a height where when I'm sitting down, I'm somewhat low against the surface so that when I have the camera close up and framed on a small project that I might be working on, I can still get my face in frame and uh, it doesn't have to be too zoomed out in order to see everything that I'm doing with my hands. So let's talk about how this cart goes together. The base of this, which of course, this is a rolling platform, it sits on a furniture dolly. The reason I started with a furniture dolly is because this is only about $20 and it comes with four heavy duty caster wheels already installed. If you bought all these parts and pieces individually, you would probably spend more like $35 or $40. So the first thing that I did to start building this cart was to take my furniture dolly, strip off the carpet off of the two rails that are padded, for its normal use so that it would be ready to start building a frame on. Now I actually built this cart kind of from the top down. I started by building the work surface that will make up the top of the miniature workbench. This is made of two lengths of two by sixes held together underneath with some pieces of a two by four. And two by four construction is what I will be using for the majority of this build. In Adam Savage's design, he uses much lighter timber. I think he actually uses maybe one by three frame uh, for his cart, which is adequate if you're just hauling tools around. But since I also want this to function as a miniature workbench that can handle banging on and doing all sorts of violent things to, I decided to go for heavier two by four construction. All of this is just held together by nails. I am aware that the hammer I'm using for this build is ridiculously tiny. I have more appropriately sized hammers, but they were in the basement of my house as I was filming this and I needed them in my workshop. So hopefully this tool cart will help to solve that issue and bring all my tools into one readily accessible location. Okay, so what I'm thinking is that all my hand tools should go on this side because this is the angled side and it'll be easy to stage them layer by layer. And then on the other side... One of the major changes I decided to make to this tool cart for my own use was to add a power supply so that I could have my drill press mounted to the top and all of my power tools hanging underneath and all connected to the same power strip, which I glued to the bottom of the cart. So I can just plug this power strip into a single extension cord and have all of my tools powered and ready to use. Now for safety reasons, I would never run more than one of these tools at once running on a single power strip, but of course I only have one set of hands. So in practicality, that's not really an issue as long as I'm working by myself. The most fun part about building this tool cart was that as I put it together, I actually got to use some of its features to finish the construction. For example, once I had the drill press installed, I could use the drill press to drill all the little holes in the pieces of wood that would hold all my hand tools. And in doing so, I could see where the chips fell. It just became really practical and I got a feel of how this tool cart would work in its everyday use on my future projects in the process of building it. All right, 
Day two, uh, I went to bed last night after a few hours of working on this, and I made a lot of progress last night that I didn't have time to film, but uh, let me show you a little bit of what I've done. I have all of my measuring tools. On this side, I have rulers and a, a compass and calipers and stuff. I figured that'd be convenient to have under my vise here. That's probably where I'll use them the most, although this this vise is mobile, it's just a clamp-on vise, so I can move this to anywhere on the bench. A lot of the stuff I also did was work on the back side of this, so if I turn it around, now you can see I have my safety glasses hanging on some fencing staples here, so they're readily accessible when I'm using the drill press or any of my power tools. I have a little broom that I use to dust off the press. And then I also have a block of wood here with a hole in it to hold my drill, which is plugged into the power strip underneath. This is a little center marking gauge that I've had in a drawer for a long time, and I always forget to use it because I forget that I even have it. My angle grinder. My angle grinder is hanging on a piece of wire here, and that's an easy thing to slip it on and off of. A material that I used to form a lot of little cubbies and compartments on this cart was aluminum landscaping trim. This is almost like aluminum flashing, but it's a little bit heavier duty, but it's still light enough that you can cut it with a pair of shears. This worked really well, for example, to form a little holster for my hot glue gun, which nailed onto the frame of my cart, and also to form a little cubby in the front of the cart to hold commonly used items that fit in their own containers, like nails and fencing staples. Now you can see that after building this first tool cart, I was inspired to build a similar one for all my welding equipment. This has actually been quite a game changer in my shop to have both this tool cart and now all my welding equipment all on these furniture dollies so that I can easily wheel the entire array of my tools around the shop with me. I have my welding shields, my face masks, I have all of the rods for welding in a piece of PVC pipe, which is bolted to this upright frame here, along with uh, a respirator. All the safety equipment you could possibly need for welding, I have right on this cart. By having my safety equipment right within arm's reach, no matter what I'm doing in my shop, that makes me much more likely to use it. So these carts have not only improved the cleanliness and organization of my workshop, they've also improved my own safety. That's pretty awesome. This is a project that I think really lends itself to customization. My purpose was to film better videos more easily. Adam Savage's purpose was to get an enormous variety of tools, which he has in his shop out into the open. I don't have nearly as many tools as he does. Your purpose may be entirely different. The construction of the basic frame is incredibly simple. This is just two by four construction held together by nails and building it on a furniture dolly even saves you some effort in building that lower portion of the rolling frame. I hope you find this project useful. It has proved to be a major game changer in how I organize and work in my shop. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Side note, before I sign off on this video, if anyone can tell me where to buy replacement cutter wheels for this large brass craft pipe cutter, that would be most appreciated. I cannot find replacements anywhere. Thanks. <laughs>